1974. And from there, we're going to skip ahead a couple of years to 1976. That was a year in which Chicago released their 10th studio album. And it was very appropriately entitled, Chicago... I love this crowd. I can promise you the questions won't get any more difficult than that this evening. Now, amazingly enough, as many hits as the first nine albums had produced, they had failed to produce a number one single for the band up to that point. And that was about to change in 1976 with the release of Chicago 10 and this next song. It's a song that went on to win two Grammys for the band. The first Grammy was for Best Arrangement Accompanying Vocal Performance and a second Grammy for Best Vocal Performance by Pop Group or Duo. And we have always felt you can tell how great a song is by taking a look at the Billboard Top 100 chart at the time and seeing what song it had to knock out of number one position because there's always a great song there. And in the summer of 76, at the top of the charts, sat a powerfully emotional song that I'm sure many of you will remember. It was called Disco Duck. <laughs> you remember? We love you for that. We're just going to take a brief moment to thank the boys from Chicago for remedying that situation as quickly as possible. And they did it in very fine style by giving us their very first number one hit single. Here's Ian to sing it for you and let us know if you remember this one. Back to 1969. It was the uh, first album and it was called, the band was called Chicago Transit Authority. Yes, that's right. And their first album produced four hits. Two of which we've already played. One was, Does Anybody Know? The other was, I'm a Man. These next two songs are the other two hits from that album, and this first one's going to feature Mr. Bob McAlpine on vocals. And at some point, it'll feature almost everyone in the band, and perhaps also you, if you care to sing along during the chorus. we can all agree on, that would be that Chicago really wouldn't be Chicago without the horns. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point I would like to introduce you to our very fabulous, talented, hard-working horn section. And we're going to go from left to right with the boys up there, starting with our saxophone player. He was a nominee for Wind Instrumentalist of the Year at the 2009 Smooth Jazz Awards, where his solo CD was also nominated for Album of the Year. Yeah. 
He shared the stage with international superstars like Bob Hope and Joan Rivers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Phil Papa on the tenor sax. In the middle on the trumpet, he is not only the founder of this band, he's also the founder of his own jazz fusion group called Synthetic Earth. They've released one CD and they were runners up at the Los Angeles Hennessy Jazz Search. And he has performed and backed up international superstars like Don Rickles and Paul Anka. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Carlucci on the trumpet. And on the far side of the stage, on the trombone, one of our country's most well-respected, hardest working and busiest trombone players. He has worked uh, theater shows like The Sound of Music, Dirty Dancing, Book of Mormon, Spamalot, Kinky Boots, and currently at Matilda. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, and, and, oh wait a second, I nearly forgot. His list of credits, the superstars he has worked with include Natalie Cole, Aretha Franklin, Barry Manilow, and the list goes on. I get jealous with this one. Guitarist Jeff Beck. <laughs> Ladies, you'll be jealous of him also. He worked for two weeks on a show backing up Hugh Jackman. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Doug Gibson on the trombone, the brass trends and horn section. All right. If you didn't know this about Chicago when you came here this evening, you've probably figured out by now that Chicago numbered all of their albums. Yeah. They had a habit of doing that. And they proved that they were not a superstitious band when they went ahead and named their 13th album Chicago 13. And it turned out to be an unlucky move because Chicago 13 was the first Chicago album that failed to produce any notable hits, and it was also the lowest selling album in the band's history to that point. The bad luck continued with the next two albums as well. So in 1981, they decided it was time for a few changes. The first thing they did was sign on with a new record company, which was Warner Brothers. They also hired a new producer who changed their sound drastically. And that was the beginning of what would become known as Chicago's David Foster era. Yes. And we're going to do one of those songs for you now. The Chicago produced, uh, uh, sorry, the David Foster produced Chicago 16 went platinum and gave the band their second number one hit single. This is hard to say, I'm sorry. Speak some more members of the band. Yeah. To my left, <laughs> <laughs> this man, <laughs> he makes me laugh just by laughing, but this man gets to sing all those beautiful, soulful songs, that thick, soulful voice, and play all those classic bass lines at the same time. He's what we refer to in the industry as a double threat. <laughs> Single player, that's true, yeah. With that said, this man has also played with the likes of Del Shannon, Benny King, The Drifters, The Mamas and Papas. I give to you Mr. Jay Spizzialli. One of them. On my right, this man was selected first overall out of 25 guitar players from around the world to win the title of 2014's Fingerstyle Guitar Champion. I've been doing that intro wrong for God knows how. I finally got it right. But what I did get right is check it out on YouTube. If you don't believe me, you watch him play on YouTube. Bob McAlpine, I'll give his name at the end again. I'll tell you YouTube, it's fantastic. Yeah, it blows me away every time. He's also recently recorded a new album. It's all uh, acoustic solo guitar pieces. And I believe some of those will be available after the show if you're interested. He's played with the likes of Roger Whitaker, Larry Gowan of the band Styx. And you can hear his guitar work on the latest Adam Sandler movie, Pixels. I give to you Bob McAlpine. Check him out on YouTube. Bob McAlpine. Thank you so much. And I would like to introduce you to our drummer and keyboard player. So starting back there on the drums. Woo! 
Yes, one of our country's most talented drummers. He has performed with the likes of Roger Hodgson from Supertramp. He's played with David Clayton Thomas of Blood, Sweat and Tears. And he has also worked with Rick Emmett from the band Triumph. He's doing a new album with Rick Emmett right now. Yes, very good. He has uh, theater credits that include shows like Lion King, Rent, and Hairspray. And he's the author of two instructional drum books. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Paul DeLong on the drums. And over here, in the keyboard section on the piano and the synthesizer, which is basically an organ tonight, isn't it, Don? Very good, very good. He's an Emmy Award-winning piano player and composer. Check that out. Yes. The only Emmy in the band, I must say. He is also the author of three music books, and he has recorded four CDs with his own original band, Monkey House. It's a fabulous band, kind of in the style of Steely Dan, which is a, a wonderful thing we all enjoy. He has also worked with the likes of Aretha Franklin, Aww. Sam Moore, and the Drifters as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Brightup. And right now we're going to go back into the David Foster catalog. This one's going to feature Ian and Jay on a wonderful duet called Hard Habit to Break. Well, we've been together for about eight years now, and the number one question we were asked for many of those years was, when are you guys going to do a CD? So, a couple of years ago, we finally had an idea, and uh, we had a concept for a CD, and this is what we did. We picked a bunch of our favorite bands and classic rock songs from the 70s, which was our favorite Chicago era. We purposely chose bands that did not have horns in them, and then we added our own Chicago flavor to those songs to make them sound like, what would they sound like if Chicago had done these songs? And you would be familiar with all the songs on the album because they're from bands like uh, The Guess Who and Rare Earth and artists like Gino Vanelli and Todd Rundgren, some of our wow. favorites. And we've also included uh, one original ballad on the album, which is done in, in the David Foster style, which I'm sure you will enjoy. And if you play that one backwards, it's our version of Disco Duck. Anyway, no, we thought it'd be a good idea to do one of those songs for you tonight so you can get uh, an idea of the flavor of the album and kind of what it's all about. And this song, coincidentally, is by a guy who was in town last night. This is our Chicago version of a song by Jackson Brown. so much. You guys having a good time tonight? There is uh, one band member up here who you, uh, you have not been formally introduced to yet, so I would like to take a second to tell you a little bit about our lead singer. And I'd like to start by saying that every Chicago song you have heard this evening has been performed in its originally recorded key, and one of the main reasons we are able to do that is the fabulous vocal range that this man possesses. He is an award-winning singer-songwriter. He was a 2009 nominee for Best Male Vocalist of the Year at the Smooth Jazz Awards. He, yes, he is. Give him a head. He has recorded one CD of original material with a second CD to be coming out any minute now. It's called The Night Porters. You can check it out at thenightporters.com. It will be available shortly. And here's an interesting bit of information which I love to tell you. He performed on Broadway in the Andrew Lloyd Webber production of Bombay Dreams, where coincidentally one of the show's producers was none other than Danny Seraphine, the original drummer of Chicago. So things do kind of come full circle. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible Mr. Ian Judson on vocals for you.
And we would like to tell you that uh, after the show this evening, we will be doing a meet and greet just out in the lobby. And as Ian mentioned, uh, there are some CDs available if anybody really enjoyed one and would like to take one home. We have those out there. And if you just want to say hello, that would be fine too. We'll remind you we have a website, brasstransit.com, and we're on Facebook. We had a lot of wonderful comments last night. So if, uh, if you'd like to take the time to put up a nice like or a comment, we would love you for that. We're also out on Instagram, so have a look for us there if you would as well. And we would like to uh, send you home with this thought and this final song. You know, you might have noticed that there's a few guys in the band up here that are over 30. <laughs> we, uh, we take good care of each other because life on the road can be rather hectic and we can get worn down. So this next song has sort of become our theme song and our motto, and it simply is called Feeling Stronger Every Day. Thank you all very much.